This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. Let's go through and have a brief recap, shall we, of government grants, which is covered by IES 20. Uh, again, nothing too technical, so nothing to get yourself too worried about. Uh, it could be part of question two or, or question three. Uh, there isn't too much to it, I don't think. Uh, so what you've got there, uh, in terms of recognising the grant, remember we're receiving cash with the form of a government grant from the government. Uh, so when do you recognise the grant? We, we're clearly going to go through it and debit the bank, but, but when can we recognise that within the accounts? Uh, well, first of all, you need to go through there and ensure that you are going to comply with the conditions attached to it. So if it is there for the purchase of uh, an item of property, plant and equipment, uh, you have to make sure that you have agreed to buy the PPE as part of the conditions of the grant. If it is there, maybe not so much as, as a capital grant, but maybe for a revenue grant, then you need to go through there and comply with the conditions of the revenue grant, which might be a condition that you need to employ a particular number of employees within your business. And once you have done that, you will then receive money towards going through and employing those employees. OK, so it's all about the compliance with the conditions attached to the grant and that you will actually receive it. OK, so there has to be virtual certainty about the fact that you are going to receive that cash. Once you've got that, then the likelihood is that you are going to go through there and use, is it the deferred income approach? So you debit the bank and credit deferred income as a liability. And then what you do there is that you then spread the income over the period uh, in which the expenditure is recognised. So if it is a capital grant to do with the purchase of PPE, then you spread it over the depreciable life of the asset. If it is there to do with a revenue grant, then you will release that deferred income Likely over the number of years that it potentially has to be that you keep the employees in employment or potentially it could be that you're just given the money from the government to, to help pay the wages and salaries for this year. So you will just release the deferred income over the next 12 months. OK, uh, just a little paragraph there that, that talks about your depreciating assets. So if the grant that you get is for a capital grant, uh, we've said that you spread the income over the period where the expenditure is released. Uh, so that's over the same life and using the same method. OK, so don't yeah, apply different lives or different methods to the depreciation and the release of the deferred income. OK, uh, so it says there in number six, explain how the purchase of property, plant and equipment and the government grant uh, will be dealt with in the financial statement of Tweddle. OK, so it does say to explain so we're starting to bring in if you like more of the the discursive aspect that you see within p2 isn't it so it asks us to talk about the ppe and the government grant so i'm not saying that you would lay it out as such but this is just to, to help us generate the ideas uh, we're thinking there aren't we about ppe we're thinking there as well about the government grant, aren't we? OK, uh, you can use headings, but don't separate your page out into separate halves. It doesn't look right. There are presentation marks going for your your structure and your clarity. OK, uh, so it does at least here help you think if you use headings about the two separate aspects, because what you can go through and do there is you can think about things, say, at your initial recognition. So the property, plant and equipment, we recognise it initially at cost. Where do we show the cost in the statement of financial position? So explain to the examiner that you recognise it at cost in the statement of financial position. And the amount that we recognise there was it at $10 million. OK. Uh, the government grants, you recognise it. Is it there as deferred income? Again, explain to the examiner that that is on the statement of financial position. 
again that statement of financial position is a liability figure isn't it okay again you recognize that there is it at two million and again you can put in there can't you when we comply with the conditions of the grant and here the conditions of the grant appear to be that you use the money to purchase the property plant and equipment okay so if you bought the ppe then clearly you have complied with the conditions of the grant uh, we can then go through there can't we and think about your subsequent measurement uh, what you've got there is you are going to depreciate or charge depreciation, aren't we? Uh, is that the 10 million over however many years? Is that 10 years? So 10 divided by your 10 years. So is that $1 million per annum? Where does depreciation go? Profit or loss. So tell the examiner that you know that it is depreciation and the expense and then the deferred income what do we have there uh, well you have the amortization of that deferred income so releasing it and that's the two million over the same 10-year period which is two million dollars per annum again that's on the statement of profit or loss if you so wish uh, you can distinguish can't we that the depreciation is an expense and the amortization of your government grant is income isn't it okay there we go again if you wanted you could then go through and start to look at what or explain what you have on the financial statements again i'm going to draw it up you would need to explain it in your own words so SFP, statement of profit or loss. On the SFP, I have my non-current assets. I have my property, plant and equipment. Was it cost of one depreciation? Or sorry, cost of 10 depreciation of one. Gives me 9 million, doesn't it? And then in my statement of profit or loss, you have that depreciation expense of 1 million. Okay. If you want to be all fancy, you can put in your non-current liabilities and also your current liabilities with regards to your deferred income. Uh, because what you've got there is we started off with deferred income of two million, wasn't it? Uh, if we look at the amounts, did I say two million? per year that should be 0.2 million careful you're probably all shouting me chris chris you've got it wrong uh we did but we've now got it right okay uh 0.2 million per annum on the statement of profit or loss careful so we had 2 million as deferred income we have released 0.2 million so you've got is it the amortization of your government grant at 0.2 million uh, the deferred income well what will be released next year is another 0.2 million isn't it uh, 0.2 million's already been released so two less 0.2 less the current liability element so is that 1.6 million okay so don't forget at the end of the first year 0.2 million has been released so the total deferred income to be released over the remaining nine years is 1.8 million isn't it uh, and then 0.2 of that is a current liability and the remainder is then non-current isn't it okay so if you like uh, the deferred income for the non-current can be considered a balancing figure, can't it? Okay, there we go. Uh, so when you're thinking about the explanation, uh, there's a detailed explanation in the answer at the back of the notes. I don't want to rewrite it. It's just a little bit worthless, isn't it? We've chatted our way through it. So when you're thinking about it, think two bits, PPE, government grants. Uh, think about initial recognition, subsequent treatment. Think about the financial statements. We've spoken about SFP 
and profit or loss. You know, there's nothing to, to stop you there to get additional marks. You know, initially, 10 million, that's a cash outflow, isn't it? Purchase of PPE within your statement of cash flows. And then this 2 million here is a cash inflow. So receipt of government grant within, again, your investing activity. So always be prepared just to throw in a sentence about the statement of cash flows if it is relevant. You know, it is a primary financial statement, isn't it? So if the question asks you to discuss or explain the accounting treatment in the financial statement, try not to limit it to just the statement of financial position and the statement of profit or loss. Throw in some cash flow. Throw in maybe some statements of changes in equity. Okay. Brilliant. If you can do that, you're well on the way to success. Uh, just a tiny little bit dangling down there at the bottom. Just a little note, just a little aside. If a government grant becomes a repayable, so you've received the money, but then the government wants the money back for whatever particular reason that it may be. OK, if that's the case, it is treated as a change in accounting estimate. So don't go back and restate everything and put in. Uh, an opening figure adjustment as a restatement of a prior year if you like change in policy if it's just a change in an estimate uh, and what you do there is you make the repayment so you credit the bank and then firstly you go against your deferred income balance so that's what you would do first of all so credit bank debit deferred income uh, if there is insufficient deferred income then the remainder of the debit is just taken as an expense. So credit bank, debit, deferred income, debit, profit or loss as an expense. So as an example, in our situation here, we had, was it 1.8 million worth of deferred income? Imagine for some crackers reason, the government wanted the whole 2 million back. They said they made a mistake, but we shouldn't have given you the 2 million, we want that money back. So you credit the bank with 2, point, or two million, you're going to debit the deferred income, what's left at 1.8. So you need to process another 0.2, don't we? Which goes to profit or loss. It's not something you're likely to see a lot of, but it's there just in case there's one of those small picky little bits in the standard that potentially the examiner can go through and throw at you. But that's it in terms of government grants. Uh, it's not a huge area of the syllabus, but it is still relevant and it is still examinable. So neglect it at your peril. Other than that, I'll see you in the next section when we go through. And if memory serves me right, I think we're about to hit the world of investment properties once again. See you all shortly.